MVP dark horse for next season and why? The question is so it's a dark horse. So me personally, I'm going to rock with Jordan Love. When you look at Jordan Love and what he did for this season, it was it was phenomenal. That back that that end of the season, that second half of the season, he's like 31 TD or something like it was it was a phenomenal season. But coming in with the Packers, this this is a very young crew. So each and year each year and year they're going to get better. And we've seen the progress with the wide receiver crew with Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Luke Musgrave. You still got Aaron Jones, who's one of the premier backs in the league. They're going to draft some more defensive pieces so they can become a better team as a whole. And Jordan Love arm talent is off the wall. I really think this Packers team can win a division next year. I mean, 10 plus, 10 plus win team. And of course, when you come into the draft, they can ask on that crew, maybe get another corner, help out Jair, get like a Kool-Aid, Terry or Arnold, really help them really get locked up for their defense. And as a whole, because this offense is going to be locked and loaded. Jordan Love is one of the best passes in the league already this season. And again, 10 win. This team's this um, Packers team is going to be a 10 win team. And I gotta rock with Jordan Love, bro. He, I, that's we talking about a dark horse. Nobody really mm-hmm. talking about Jordan Love, bro. I gotta go. I gotta go with Jordan Love. The dark horse for MVP. It's gonna be a non-quarterback, and that's none other than Jonathan Taylor. We're talking about a Colts team that was nine and eight this season with the injured Anthony Richardson. So once you put Anthony Richardson back on that team, I think this team is, is has the ability to win twelve plus games. So that jump in wins and then making the playoffs. Jonathan Taylor, who we've seen an eighteen hundred yard rushing season from him. The up and wins with him, and they're probably seeing less stack boxes because I think Anthony Richardson is going to be a viable quarterback and make defenses respect his arm. Jonathan Taylor is, go- is going to be has a chance for 2,000 yards for me. Jonathan Taylor, we understand, is a phenomenal running back in the conversation for best running back in the league when healthy. Run through the tackles, getting better, better at catching the ball, and he's going to be the lead guy on this offense. We understand, yes, Anthony Richardson is a dynamic playmaker, but he's still going to rely on Jonathan Taylor to help take pressure off him coming off that injury. Jonathan Taylor, 2,000 yard rushing. Right, rushing guard season very possible 800 to 700 passing yards with that very possible Jonathan Taylor is going to put up numbers and he's going to get, collect the touchdown but once they're in the red zone it's going to be all Jonathan Taylor they're going to force feed they're going to force feed that guy similar to a Christian McCaffrey type so Jonathan Taylor is going to have the numbers his team is going to get better which we all know MVP voters love when the team is good the best player on the best team is going to get love Jonathan Taylor we've seen it before this, this season, if he plays 16 games, he's going to be right there in the MVP conversation. And, we're, and when we're talking about a dark horse, we understand quarterbacks have the bias and borders have the bias towards the quarterback. But as a running back and a running back who can impact the team, it's Jonathan Taylor. I mean, shout out the Jonathan Taylor pick, but dark horse MVP means you kind of have to be able to win MVP. If Cooper Cup's not winning MVP, Jonathan Taylor's not winning MVP. Let's be very clear. But let's talk about the Rams a little bit. My dark horse is Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford obviously had a lot of great seasons throughout the years, but he was never really considered that MVP favorite. Even during the Cooper Cup season, he wasn't considered an MVP favorite. But what we've seen from the Rams after retooling their team, they're a scary team going into the next year. Their running back, Kyron Williams, is really good. Puka's uh, establishing himself as one of the best receivers in the NFL. And another year year for Cooper Cup to get healthy. The big thing for this team, especially moving next season, is that defense to get more loaded, and they will. They were winning a lot of games later on the season. They were a dangerous team that almost beat the Ravens. It was so close on that one punt return that really sealed it for the for the Ravens in that game, but they almost did what they had to do against them. They almost did what they had to do against the Lions, and next year they're going to be even better. Let's talk about what Matthew Stafford's going to do. Matthew Stafford's going to have an amazing year. He's going to throw for over 4,000 yards. Expected. He's going to win over 12 games or even over 10 games expected. And that offense, when it comes down to it, is going to be led by Stafford. He is what it what he is what that offense needs at the end of the day with Sean McVay. And Cooper Cup is not who he was anymore. Puka is still a rookie. So they're going to look at Stafford to, to do um, everything for the offense. He has the clutch winning drives. He's going to have the yards. He's going to have the touchdowns, the clip completion percentage. He's going to be one of the dark horse MVP. Yeah. Yeah, to me, I think it really comes down to the question, who is a dark horse? When you have the fifth best odds to win MVP, you're not a dark horse. You're a known commodity. With Jordan Love, we've seen what he did last year. People have him in MVP conversations. A dark horse is someone who we don't think but has the possibility. So if Jonathan Taylor has a historic running back season with Anthony Richards there, with the Colts possibly winning more games, jumping to 12 wins, Jonathan Taylor is 100% a dark horse candidate. Keyword, dark horse. 2,000 yards rushing, plus maybe another six, 700 yards receiving. He's going to cover all the boxes. And he's a dark horse because no one's picking him to win an MVP this year but he still has a realistic opportunity based on the numbers he can accumulate okay so first off the quarterback play this year was not not as what it used to be so also and, and also i will argue that anthony richardson has more of a case for being mvp this year over jonathan taylor because if he stays healthy he's going to be with a shane Steichen. shane Steichen is an amazing oc 
Yes, you have John Taylor. He, he, John Taylor had to have to get like some two thousands and two thousand yards to break MVP. John, um, Anthony Richardson can literally throw for thirty eight hundred yards, and we all know what he is as a unit as a runner. He's gonna give you eight hundred, nine hundred, damn near underground with five TDs. And the coaches won nine games with Gardner Minshew. You bring Anthony Richardson back, shit, that might be eleven. Uh -huh.